what's up we're gonna go over character IO and maybe a little bit of color along with that right here in QBasic so the first thing we'll do is one thing I don't know if I ever knew before or mentioned in a, any of the earlier videos either is that you can just click right here to get into help and then jump straight to content or index or whatever you want All right and then hit escape to get or let's see if we press this again that just goes there here's escape to cancel and then you can also run the program from right there step through it and access your, all your list of subs and functions and switch windows apparently and there's also the shortcuts F2, F6 alright so what we want here is we're gonna go ahead and go into help and go to index right click on that scroll down and go to color where is it? is there no color statement? as you can see it sets the screen display colors so color and then everything in square brackets of course is optional excuse me so there's several different maybe a dozen different screen modes you could say um, we're by default we're in this one I believe it's been a long time so anyway, the only thing we really need to worry about right now is just setting the foreground and or background color. So you can see that if one color is given, that will automatically set just the foreground in those modes. And if two colors are given, the first one will be the foreground, the second one will be the background. Um, pretty much the same case with ours. And then we can also supply a border apparently. And this screen statement right here will set the mode. These are just alternate resolutions. Um, for right now, we're not going to mess with that. Yeah, and then right here, there's cycling. Let's go ahead and try this one. See what it looks like. Copy that. We'll try an immediate. And then hit enter on each line as you can see that made the font really big and then you know what actually we won't do this in immediate we'll do it right here and then shift insert and F2 oh, F5 nice so that went through and counted from 1 to 15 and then for each number that it was on it went ahead and cr printed that foreground color value so you can see right here 4i equals 0 to 15 color how did that print a 1 if it was i equals 0 to 15 that's interesting okay so then it sets the color to i and then it prints whatever number i is currently on and then it goes to the next tile. Let's try to um, do Shift F5. Oh, we're just not seeing zero because it's pitch black. That's what the deal is. So if we set the uh, the background here as well, was it a comma there? Comma background. Okay, so we'll set the comma background to 15. And then it should be the opposite this time. We should be able to see the 0, but not the 15. And then Shift F5. I can't see the 0 or the 15. Hmm. Let's try this with something more neutral, like maybe a 7. Here we can see the 15. We can't see the 7. So for some reason, you probably figured it out by now. I haven't why we can't see the the zero screen seven four I zero to fifteen. So it sets this to zero, then it says print zero. Okay, 
Okay, let's go to color. You can also right click on the word instead of just hitting F1 like I was. So I'm going to right click on it. Color, click in here and scroll down. And then color attributes and values. So black, that is the first one. Hmm. Anyway, I don't want to spend too much time on that right now. This is uh, character IO is what it is in the C programming book equivalent to what we're covering right now. So I'm going to go ahead and do a clear screen. And basically, this is how to, in a terminal, you can get characters a character at a time, which is basically a letter at a time or a symbol at a time, or you can get them a line at a time. And basically, the old teletype machines, to my knowledge, and terminals, even the virtual terminals still in use today on Linux-like systems, send it a character at a time. So as you type each character, it goes through what's called a remote echo process before you see it. So you type the character, it's invisibly sent across the line, so to speak, to the remote server, and that remote server acknowledges that it received that character by printing it back to the display, to your terminal display. So that's character at a time remote echo. Then there's the local echo where you can actually see the characters as you type them before they're sent. And in that situation, remote echo is usually turned off so you don't end up with double characters. Um, but And the local echo is obviously more convenient for line by line based editing. Because then you can type the entire line locally, see what you're typing, then you press return and send it. So basically with a remote connection or something like a Linux virtual terminal that might be emulating a remote connection, you're going to have that, most likely have that character by character, remote echo character at a time type of thing with a, uh, like a command prompt, like a DOS command prompt, you're going to have a uh, local echo where you'll type in the whole line and then you'll hit enter and that will submit the line to the command interpreter. That's also the way the line by line is usually the way that um, the standard library, the really generic standard library that comes with most programming languages, it's going to be more designed in general to handle a line by line input. And that's the way that I like to deal with things. It makes it the most portable and consistent in general. Um, with DOS though, with QBasic and DOS, it actually does something like, even if you do get a character at a time, it's usually, it's a little bit different of a situation. If you're doing file streaming and whatnot, character at a time is really natural. Um, but to be able to get a character without, from like the terminal, from the user directly without a, a new line without them hitting enter to submit the character or characters to you is a different situation that beyond the black and white text everything below that terminals get really platform dependent um, and hardware dependent as well so in order to just get a keystroke like if you want to make a video game and write it at a really low level without using any libraries you just to get those arrow keys live as they're pressed is sort of a chore and it's going to be different on each and every platform but nice enough uh, QBasic provides a way for us to get those characters immediately so it's a little bit you could say uh, maybe unconventional but it's nice to have here in QBasic but just know that it is somewhat of a luxury so I'm going to right click on a very common uh, pattern, I'll hit escape to get back, is to go into the help, go to the contents, and then I just look for this word programming, keywords by programming task, and right click it. And that gets you everything more, more or less organized into these little subgroups. So we want, here's file IO, which is, can be very similar. There's the input that we want. I wonder if that's up here, device input and output. Oh, so it's in key. 
Let's take a look at input string and see what's different. Return string read from a specified file. Okay, so that must be line at a time from a file. And then input is from the keyboard or a file. And then we're going to go with in key right here. Reads a character from the keyboard. Returns a null string if there is no character to return. So one common thing is to run this in a while loop and see if a character, just like what's done right here. Go ahead and copy and paste this. Edit, copy, and then double click on untitled and edit. Well, let me scroll back up. We might have old code up here. Okay, go just below CSS, CLS and paste it. And so the indentation doesn't really matter. Let's see if we can highlight all this and hit shift tab. Nice. And then this do loop is empty, of course. So it's gonna it's gonna print press escape to exit, and that will be sitting right there on the line. And nothing, you know, will clear the screen, it will print that, and then it will enter this loop and do starts the loop. So and then loop until this condition is met. And this is just a comment to remind us that um, 27 is the ASCII code for the escape in the top left of most keyboards. And so since we can't really escape like a, you know, it's not like a printable character to represent that, what we do is we pass that numeric ASCII code and then tell it to return a character value into a string. And uh, we never see that. So since it's non-printing, it just sort of like stuffs the code inside of a string does a little trickery, a little low-level trickery right there, but that's kind of what's going on because this seems kind of ambiguous, to, especially to a beginner. And inky is sort of a function and its return value at the same time. That's going to pull real quick the keyboard, the keyboard buffer, and see if there's a key in there that's been sent. And if there is, it will return that value as a string. And if there isn't, then it will, uh, it will return null. Or basically nulls like a symbolic value for no value. Okay, so we'll go ahead and shift F5 to run it. And you can see it says press escape. Of course at the top I was thinking at the bottom. And I'll press something else. Nothing else is happening. Enter. Control C doesn't usually work in DOSBox. Um, okay, I'll hit escape. And I'm pressing a key to continue. Alright, so that's how that works. So what we're going to do is we're going to change and then of course printing would be character output. It's not really a straight ahead equivalent, at least not in QBasic for this um, get character and put character kind of thing. Talks about a text stream which is um, characters divided into new lines. Each line consists of zero or more characters followed by a new line character. It's the responsibility of the library to make each input or output stream conform to this model. Alright, so I was just going to do basically what that example did where it cycled through all the colors. So that's basically it for character input and output. In the next one we'll cover file copying and character counting. I wanted to keep it kind of basic for now, but we'll go into the ways to do that. I'll probably try not to, I could see myself like deviating from trying to stick to C so much. Um, I'll definitely try and stick to the exercise problems for the most part, but just sticking with the low level stuff isn't, isn't going to line up that well. So anyway, I'll just leave it at that for now. Right on.